In 1992, we obsessed over the last ball. In 1996, it was Alan Donald not playing in the game. By 1999, it was Alan Donald again, this time being run out. In 2003, DLS was the star or enemy. 2011 was the year of the 12th sledging. And in 2019, they never even turned up after losing two of their early matches. It is possible that Richie Benno put a hex on South Africa for showing up his silly rain rules back in 1992. It is also possible that there is something else going on with South Africa and World Cups. Like the fact that South Africa are a terrible chasing team at World Cups, and they always have been. And in every single moment I mentioned at the top of the show, South Africa were chasing. So with that in mind, is this the team to break the hex? And if they are, why did they choose to bat first against Bangladesh? This video is brought to you by Wicket Cricket Manager. This show was made by HCL Tech, a company that believes in partnerships so much you can read their name on the Australian shirt. This show leans in hard on data and technology, so we are proud to work with HCL Tech, leaders in their field. South Africa were all over the place in ODI since the last World Cup. They lost so many early on that it looked like they may not qualify directly for the tournament. They didn't play against Australia for their own T20 series, there was just so much going on with them. Because of that, this was the first World Cup in the last six editions where they haven't been among the favourites. You could get them at 10 or even 12 to 1, depending on the bookmaker. Yet looking at their team and how they played, it didn't actually make a lot of sense. They had the fourth best win-loss ratio and their batting was as good as India's, plus they had five frontline bowlers in every single game. This looked like, at least on paper, an incredible team. And it's why I told people that this was the side that was a value bet coming in. But why didn't they come in when it came to odds? Well, probably because teams with far bigger stars and better records for South Africa have turned that into nothing when it comes to World Cups. This is South Africa's performance in each cycle heading into World Cups. They were ranked fifth before 1996, but then first in 1999, where they should have won, second for the next three tournaments before slumping back to fourth for this edition, their lowest mark in a while. And it's also worth saying that the current South African lineup does not contain a who's who of international stars. They do have Kagisa Rabada, Quentin de Kock, and David Miller. But that's pretty much it as far as their big names go. Seven players in this World Cup squad are here for the first time, including their captain. In terms of banner names, it's not quite the squads of the past. In fact, Faf Duplessis and Anrik Nokia are probably two of the biggest names they have, and they're not here. But this does look like a slightly different South African team. They have a real way of playing that is different than we've seen before. On the 3rd of September, they played a T20 against Australia. South Africa found themselves 12 for 2 after 2.1 overs. The sensible thing to do from a South African perspective would have been for the batters to shelve their extravagant shots and play a lot more defensive. When you think of South Africa, you often think of a team that's always worried about worst case scenario in the way that they bat. However, that is not what they chose to do in that game. They went as hard as they could. And their current superpower seems to be scoring quite quickly without losing any wickets. And the last two years, they are the best batting sides in ODI. They score 0.3 runs and over quicker than India, and they average 6.5 more than England. They are absolute beasts. Yet, they are also the team who lost to the Netherlands in this tournament. In fact, they've lost to them twice in the last two World Cups. And both of those losses have the exact same patterns as the ones I mentioned at the top. So is it possible that South Africa cannot chase at World Cups? And the first thing we need to do is look at how they chase in ODI history. South Africa have the best record batting first in one day. They're a jump up on Australia and miles from Pakistan in third. When it comes to chasing, they're the second best, but not that far off the Australians. But they're also still well clear of England, India and Pakistan who drops off a bit. But what if we just compare them from the first innings to the second innings? There is no team that is worse chasing compared to how they bat in the first innings than South Africa. There's a couple of patterns here that I can see. One is that bowling sides seem to prefer to bat first, Pakistan, Australia, and South Africa. And the batting sides like to go second in England and India. But the West Indies and New Zealand do confuse matters a little bit here. But if I'm looking for a really strong pattern here, it's that South Africa have a preference that only matches India and England's preferences, just in the opposite direction. But remember, I did say they are still the second best chasing team in the history of ODIs. It's just that they prefer to bat first way more. So to paraphrase Facebook, it's complicated. Now, most teams prefer to chase in ODIs. And there's not much in it, but you can see a difference here. So South Africa having a massive drop is a bit of an issue. However, I've always had this theory that chasing in the World Cups is a lot more difficult. 
because in a normal game, if you were chasing 320 and you lose two early wickets, you might as well just go for it. What is to lose? In a World Cup, the weight of the nation and the occasion is massive. And I was right, although far more than I ever imagined. The overall record goes from winning above 50% of matches to only 46.1 when chasing in World Cups. One day cricket is essentially two different sports, bilaterals and World Cups. And in the trophy games, you want to bat first. But wait, Australia also have a dip and Pakistan too. And between them, they have six titles and a couple more losing finals as well. South Africa have none of those. So what is the difference? So when you look at bilateral batting in the second innings, you see that South Africa are one of two teams who score quicker in the second than they do in the first, India being the other. But to do that, they average 1.7 runs less. And again, losing wickets in bilaterals are bad, but every dismissal in a World Cup brings so much more pressure. So Australia and Pakistan bat slower than South Africa. The men in green don't lose as many wickets in their chase either. And Australia lose a few more, but are slower and surer than South Africa in those chases. But this is bilaterals, remember. What about at World Cups? In the first innings of World Cup matches, South Africa are the greatest batting side we have ever seen. They are on their own here. Oh, and let me factor in runs per over as well. Yes, they are by far, by a massive amount, the best batting team in World Cups in the first innings, and Daylight is second. I honestly couldn't believe how good they were here. But I have to look at the second innings as well, I suppose. So that is where we could see a drop. They go from first to fourth. That is a slide. But sadly, there is a much worse way of showing this. If I could drop my mic, I would do that now. They are 12 runs a wicket worse when chasing than when batting first. That is so much more dramatic than I ever believed possible. And when you bring in runs per over, it gets so much worse because they massively slow down as well. Losing almost a full run per over from the first to the second inning. And this is what it looks like when you compare their bilateral form to their World Cup form. There is no other team in the world that has a pattern anything like this. South Africa, the World Cup team, is nothing like South Africa, the bilateral team. In normal ODIs, they prefer not to chase. In World Cups, they set fire to themselves. Since the 16th of June, 1999, South Africa are a 50-50 side in World Cups when chasing. 11 wins, 11 losses, and two ties. Of course, you could also argue that those ties are losses as both of them sent them out of the tournament. And why did I pick the 16th of June? Because it is the day before this happened. There is no doubt that South Africa doesn't like chasing as much and that World Cups are far harder to chase in. Underperform when chasing in trophy games a hilarious amount. So with that in mind, why did they choose the bat first against Bangladesh? That was a perfect game to get some match practice while chasing. In a World Cup, with a few wins behind them already. They have been fearless with the bat, knowing they have little to come down the order for years now. Their batting is exceptional in ODI cricket. So surely this was a time to be as courageous with the toss as they have been with the bat. They should be batting second in every game from here on in. Because unless their luck changes with tosses, and it probably won't because this is South Africa at a World Cup, the only way for them to win this trophy is for them to chase in the semi or final. And so after years of panic and worry, to win this World Cup and break the hex, South Africa need to embrace the chase.